Good morning. It's Pastor Kirk Peters from St. Matthew Lutheran Church uh, coming to you with uh, six weeks of devotion, day six. Uh, we had a little interruption there. Uh, it's a nice day today in North Dakota, uh, but uh, fall is coming and uh, they stopped by to blow out the uh, um, sprinkler lines uh, so the water doesn't freeze in there. And uh, I'm here alone today, so um, uh, they came to my office and uh, we uh, had just a little bit of problem there and I'll try and edit that out. But uh, if we could begin again on page 285, page 285 of a Lutheran service book, responsive prayer two. We begin. Oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We have a reading from James, the third chapter, beginning with verse 3, 12. And I lost you here again. Let me adjust. There we go. I got you back. Okay, sorry about the interruption. James 3.13 Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers sh who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes, this is the beginning of uh, chapter four, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you. You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You are quarrel and fight. You quarrel and fight. You do uh, not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you are asking with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Tina had her driver's license for about six months. One afternoon, she confronted her dad about getting her a car. Dad, all my classmates have a car. Why can't I have one? Her father gave several reasons why he did not think she needed a car at this time. They lived close to school, finances were tight, and her experience with driving was limited. Tina's reaction was filled with anger and resentment. For several days, Tina Tina attempted to punish her parents. She sulked, withdrew to her room, and engaged in little conversation. Frequently, we demonstrate similar attitudes and behaviors when we don't get our way. We become critical when our spouse disappoints us. We expect a promotion and resent the employer when it doesn't come. Time and again, our battles within us leave us separated, disengaged, and isolated from our relationships. We are sinners who sin daily. God takes our quarrels, our personal battles, and lays them on his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest battle God had with us was over our sinful condition and our sins. Jesus went to the cross to suffer and to die for our selfish desires and quarrels, so we could always be in relationship with him as his redeemed, forgiven children. We pray 
Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me when I quarrel and become selfish in my desires. Open my eyes to see that my demands are self-serving rather than serving you and glorifying you. Grant me the power of your Holy Spirit to overcome sinful desires. In your holy name, O Lord, I pray. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the versicles. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for mercy. We use the morning collect. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and defend us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. I was going to, uh, uh, before we I sign off here, I've been uh, uh, working with uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Uh, some of you know that, uh, working through those things. And uh, I, have, I am just... It's just incredible the mercy that God shows to Cain, uh, even though he is uh, murderous in his heart and then murderous also with his hands. Um, I start here uh, with Genesis chapter 4, uh, the last half of uh, verse 2. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor upon Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry. And uh, I found one uh, Hebrew translation there that uh, said his face glowed. Uh, that's how angry he was. And his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? 
If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. So we see even in uh, in his first conversation here after uh, Abel's sacrifice uh, that is, is accepted, God extends a hand of mercy and love uh, and uh, attempts to convince Cain uh, to do what is right. I offer to you that that is to offer a proper sacrifice. Um, so uh, God uh, does not uh, uh, leave his... Uh, I should say, uh, God extends to him his favor, uh, even though he has been uh, sinful uh, previously. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? I, I don't know, he replied, am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Okay, um, Cain is a farmer. So here he's being driven from the land. Uh, his idol, if you will, is the produce of the land. And uh, uh, God basically kills that God in his sentence that uh, he's gonna be driven from the ground and be a wanderer. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so, if anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then he put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. Why in the world would God do that? Uh, to put a mark on Cain, uh, marking him who as one who has God's protection and that there, God gives a command uh, not to kill Cain. Uh, I kind of thought about this. Maybe it's a big M for mercy. Uh, God is merciful to Cain, and so the other inhabitants of the earth should be merciful to him as well. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Okay, so uh, God allows him uh, to leave. Um, he doesn't wander, uh, other than that uh, I also found... Uh, a reference to the land of Nod being the land of wandering. But Cain builds a city here in 17, verse 17. Cain lay with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city and he named it after his son Enoch. So we, again, we see even with the mark of Cain, uh, God uh, uh, is trying to be merciful to Cain and give him opportunity to repent, and in repentance, God forgives, uh, and uh, uh, we receive his mercy, love, and grace uh, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Um, it's uh, another day in God's kingdom where we rise to uh, uh, work and serve uh, him in our various vocations. God bless you.